and we've got audio, so we should be good. All right, well, let's uh, let's get back to it. So uh, last time we were talking infinite series, and we're going to continue with that uh, discussion today and, well, for quite some time. Um, so last time we talked about the geometric series uh, situation, and... Uh, the geometric series situation is kind of an unusual one, as we're going to see, because in a lot of the cases, we will be able to tell whether or not a series converges or diverges. However, if they converge, I won't be able to tell you what they converge to. I might be able to approximate it, right? Like we could, we could do a bunch of number crunching and add up the first 100 million terms or something, right, and get a, a really good approximation of what it converges to, but I can't necessarily, in every situation, tell you precisely what something converges to. Um, geometric series are a good exception to that, because there, if they converge, we can t say exactly what they converge to, namely uh, using the 1 over 1 minus r thing, okay? Um, but not always are we so lucky in... Um, uh, in practice for other things. Uh, or, uh, as we'll also see, it might be the case that in some situations, at first we won't be able to tell what they converge to, but after we build up our toolbox a little bit, we'll actually be able to do more than than perhaps you might have expected from the get-go. So, um, right. All right, so let's go to a clean sheet here and switch the power over so that this laptop doesn't die. Um, okay, so... All right. All right, so the next thing that we want to talk about, and this is going to feel kind of familiar um, at first, is let me talk about uh, what's called a P-series, and it's something of the form, oop, not X, but N to the P. Does that look familiar in some way? Yeah? Yeah, this looks a whole lot like this, okay? And we will actually explore pretty thoroughly that connection uh, between the sum and the integral uh, on Monday. Um, but for now we can just sort of say, well, let's take the uh, the integral side of it. Under what circumstances does that integral converge? For what values of P? Yeah, okay. And so what would you expect for the series to do for when it should converge? Same thing? Does that seem reasonable? Okay. Now, we'll make precise why that's reasonable and why it works on Monday. But for now, it diverges otherwise. Okay. Um, and... Uh, We'll also look at sort of situations that are similar to this. So, for example, what about if I had um, something like that? That kind of looks like the same thing, right? The inside's a little bit more complicated, and so this is kind of like that and it'll be the same story, okay? So if it looks like a P-series and it walks like a P-series, it's probably a P-series, 
Okay. So moral of the story is um, like with integrals, um, or like with the P integral test that we had, we have the P series test. And like I said, we'll go through some more detail as to why these things match up on, um, on Monday uh, when we talk about the thing called the integral test. Uh, okay, so um, let me actually, let's uh, look at a, um, a special case here of of this guy. Okay. This thing is called the harmonic series. Um, <clears throat> now, according to the p-test, under does this thing converge or diverge? Yeah, fight to the death over whether or not it converges or diverges. Jack, why don't you school them? Why? Yeah, last time I checked, one was not greater than one. It's equal to it. So this guy diverges. This thing diverges because one is sadly not greater than one. Now, if it had been one over n to the one point oh 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 one, it would have converged, right? So this guy is sort of right, literally on the edge of between convergence and divergence in some sense. Okay. Um, what I wanted to do, maybe to to kind of have some fun, is to think about well. Other than cheating and using the p-test, which we haven't really proven works yet, how could we maybe feel or see that this thing converges or diverges? Okay. Um, and so we're going to do something kind of clever. We're going to do some 13th century mathematics today. Okay. So you guys... Uh, Get on your robes, get out your broadswords, where it's time to go back to 1284 or whatever. Well, that's a good question. What was going on in 1284? Yeah, that's true. Okay. Well, let's go to Wikipedia. <laughs> they do. Okay. So let's see. Um, Putting an end to the Bedouin rebel rebellion that had toppled his brother in 1283, Abu Hafs Umar I reconquers Tunis and reinstalls the Hafsids as the dominating dynasty. Peter III of Aragon takes advantage of the weakness of the Hafsid dynasty and raids the island of Jerba. The Aragonese massacre the population and occupy the island. Um, Mamluk, Sultan of Egypt, uh, Al-Masar Kalawun signs a 10-year truce with the Crusader city of Acre. He will violate the truce on various pretexts in 1290. The Brazi or Byzantine city of Trelis uh, falls to the Turkish emirate of Mentesse. 20,000 people are led off as slaves. Uh, the statue of Rudlan extends English law into Wales. The Battle of Gulf Naples, King Charles II of Naples, is captured by Roger of Loria, Admiral of King Peter III of Aragon. Uh, Jonkopang in Sweden is granted crown privileges. Uh, the Italian city-state of Genoa defeats its rival Pisa at sea. German warlord uh, makes a campaign to Karelia to tax Karelians, but is defeated by Novgorod and the men of uh, Staraya Ladoga, so in Russia. Um, yeah, sounds like all sorts of things just going on. Yeah. Um, yeah, okay. So, um, 
Oh, and the Republic of Venice begins co coining the Ducat, a gold coin that is to become the standard of the European coinage for the following 600 years. Yeah. All right, so a lot happened in 1284. Um, but let's take our series 1 over n. What I want to do is start listing out terms. Okay? So the first term Okay, so I'm not going to list out all of the terms. I'm going to be really clever, and I'm going to list out the first, second, fourth, eighth, and then you guys could probably guess what the next one would be that I would list out. I would list out the 16th term. Now, why I picked those to list out is because I'm evil, um, or actually I know where I'm going with this, but... Um, let me take um, this first term. This is equal to 1, right? And I'm going to write in a different color here. That second term, is it bigger than a half plus a half? Okay, why is it? What have I done? I've replaced the 1 with 1 over 2, okay? All right, now if I'm going to play that sort of trick on the next term, the S4 term, what do you think I'm going to write this as? Yeah. Uh, well, just, just humor me for right now, okay? All right, so first off, is that true, what I've written? Yeah. Looks true to me, okay? Um, and I know it's true because one-fourth is certainly the smallest term, and I know that one-third, one-half, and one are all individually bigger than one-quarter, and so as a sum, they're collectively bigger than three copies of the one-quarter, and then I've got the extra one-quarter on the end that's equal, okay? All right, now, what would this look like if I did it for S8? Yeah, it's going to be 8, 1 over 8. All right, and now let's total everything up. Okay. So the red terms... Well, and the first one in red and black are the same because there's nothing to do. Um, all add up to one. And the series in question is bigger than the series of the red terms, right? Because I've, uh, and I've left some things out. Okay, so we should see that the series in question is greater than the series, well, what have we been, what are we doing here? We're really just adding up one, and I'm going to use K there, but it doesn't really matter. Um, right, the, the red series, the new one, where I is one plus 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 one. What do you mean what I'm about to do? Well, that's the whole point. That's why it diverges. Yeah. So what does this series do here? That thing clearly diverges, right? And the series we started with is definitely bigger than it. Therefore, what? 
do you mean one and a half is less than two? I mean, yeah, that's true, but. Yeah. Um, okay, hold on. I think I'm, um, okay, so what am I, uh, hold on. Oh, well, okay, so here's, yeah, I'm not doing a very good job of making this precise, but what have I done, though? Um, I have also left off a whole bunch of things in the middle, right? So, S, where's S3? Well, right, I've left him off, right? So, um, you have to be a smart ass, don't you? Um, yeah, it is. Okay, I'm, I'm, damn it. You had to ruin my Friday. Oh yeah. Okay. Sorry. Let let I I flubbed the details. All right. Okay, so I've written out the first eight terms of the series, right? Well, let me leave the first two alone. This do you buy, Mr. Trap? Okay. I committed what we call in computer science an off by one error. Um, okay, so do you buy that one third plus one fourth is less than, sorry, greater than one fourth plus one fourth? Yes, okay. Do you buy that one fifth plus one sixth plus one seventh plus one eighth is greater than four copies of one eighth? Yeah. Okay. Now I'm uh, now I'm good. I'm cooking with gas. Okay. What would the next one be? It'd be but and how many copies of it? Bam. Right. Eight copies of one sixteenth. Well, what does this and that add up to? Eight copies of one sixteenth, or four copies of an eighth, they all add up to one half, right? So what I've shown is that Sn is greater than one plus um, um, well, let's see how do I want to count this? Uh, this is eight, so this would be. Three copies of eight. Um, uh, let's see. Well, how many copies of it do we have? So if n is one, okay, we have two. n is three, four. Um, 
Well, okay, let me just let me just write it like this. Okay, and I'll just sweep the details under the dot, dot, dot for right this instant because I just don't feel like getting into a counting argument right this instant. Um, okay, so what this shows, though, is that no matter how far down I go in this series, it's bigger than one plus a bunch of one-halves added together, right? Well, what's going to happen if I go off to infinity here? What does this do? If so, what does one plus what does that do? Right, it diverges, and the series in question is bigger than that, so therefore it should diverge also, right. All right, this proof is due to Nicola Rem, um, and I forget the dates on him, but it's 13th century. Let me look it up. Uh, no, it's not. I just made that up because it's cold. Oh, oh, I am way off. It was 14th century. My bad. Yeah, so, um, yeah, 1320... 25 to 1382. We're not sure about his birth. Uh, yeah, so let's see. Uh, he was uh, influential works on economics, math, physics, astrology, and astronomy, philosophy, theology, was Bishop of Lucieux, a translator, counselor to King Charles V of France, and one of the most original thinkers in 14th century Europe. So this is his, um, um, basically his proof that this series diverges. Now, to be clear, it's not like he wrote this series diverges and because of the nth term, blah, 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 right? Like that, those, that terminology didn't exist yet. Okay. Um, and actually, I have not actually read his original, the original source for this, but I ought to at some point. So, okay. Um, well, since we're in the 14th century, um, what else was there were a lot of in the 14th century and other wars. dying, um, wars, okay. conquering? Okay. Uh, yeah, that's a little later. <laughs> well, no, um, not amongst themselves. Um, so, yeah, lots of things were going on. And let's say at C. What was going on at C? So, Ships? So, yeah, there were slave. I mean, it wasn't the way that slavery, you know. There's been slavery throughout all of it. I mean, there are still slaves in this world um, in a few places. But, um, yeah, so at C, would you expect that there were lots of pirates? Arr, there be pirates, ahoy, right? There were. All right, so let's talk about the following series. Okay, first off, do you expect that this thing would converge or diverge? Just gut feeling. Okay, why do you think it diverges? <laughs> no, we've had plenty of convergent ones. We had the geometric ones last time. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, we got some good Friday humor. How about that? Uh, it's actually going to converge, and one way to look at it is that this thing kind of is an n squared, right? If I foiled this stuff out, I'd have n squared plus n. For large values of n, the n doesn't really matter, but the n squared sure does, and by the p-test, this probably is going to converge, okay? But we can do better on this one. 
well, okay, so what I mean is if we if we just sort of what's our gut feeling? Converge. Okay. Well, no, we're not supposed to depend on that. Trust me, I'm a doctor. Okay. Take two and call me in the morning. Uh, you know how many people died because they didn't see a doctor? I'm going to guess that one of those numbers is bigger than the other. Well, <laughs> the other thing, though, is, is it possible that you have just committed the grievous fallacy of post hoc ergo propter hoc? After this, therefore, because of this, right? So, because it's more stuffy in Latin. Uh, yeah, well, there were like a hundred wars in just one year. <laughs> yeah, Farden. Yeah, 2020. 20, uh, Farden says 2020 might not be the worst year in history. There were like a hundred wars in just one year. Yeah, well, uh, yeah. I mean, 2020 is pretty bad, right? I mean, now, have like half of the world gotten conquered and enslaved and cities burning and pillaging? Not so much. Huh? Uh, I, yeah, let's get back to calculus. Speaking of relative, like pirates, yes. Um, okay, if this were an integral, and I asked you to integrate 1 over n, n plus 1, what might you do? Cry? Oh. If only we had a technique. Oh. Well, okay, there's going to be some logs involved, but <laughs> trust me, the pirate thing is going to go way, it's it's way better than that, okay. Uh, yes, logs are involved in shipbuilding, and integrating this would involve a log, but could I break this thing up and do some partial fractions? Okay. Uh, I could, and I just realized I might have messed... Oh, no, 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 I'm good. Um, so, yeah, what are the coefficients? Yeah, finally, well, okay, so coal. All right, well, all right so what's my A and what's my B? How are you going to find them? Well, okay, keep going. Okay. Okay, fine. Uh-huh. Equals. Okay. Then what? Equals. It's right there below. On. Yeah. On. Okay. Okay. Okay, and so B. Bam. Okay, good job. Okay, good. Excellent. All right, so what I'd like you to do then is now that we've, with Cole having done the algebra for you, um, what I would like you to do is start to write out, so I wrote down S1, and I used the 
broken up form that Cole gave us. What's S2? And then we'll do S3 and S4. Well, okay, it's going to be S1 plus some extra stuff, right? No, no, com compute. Okay. Mm hmm. I'm going to put that over there. Well, sort of. It's not. Okay, what's S3 going to be? Okay, so I just put this back over there for reference. Okay, it's going to be the same thing, but what's the next term going to be? Oh, I'm sorry. I S3. Okay, do you notice anything? Well, what do you notice? Jack. Middle terms cancel out. Okay. All right. Uh, how did those sound effects go again, Mr. Trapp? Okay, well, let's make sure we get that on audio. Okay, so. Oh, let me get behind you then. So that's. Okay, so. Uh, all right, so pew, 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 pew. Okay. Uh, I need to put like sound effects on here and be like, pew, 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 pew. yeah, I could do that. Um, okay. All right. So what's the pattern here? Yeah, the only thing that survives is the first and the last term. Uh, that's definitely not true. <laughs> well, yes, very, very, very true. Uh, but the, the denominator is one bigger than the index, right? So S2, the last term is one third. S3, the last term is one quarter, and they're all minus. Okay, so in general, Sn is 1 minus 1 over n plus 1. So what's the limit of Sn? 1. So this series converges. So the original series... converges to 1. What the heck does this have to do with pirates? Uh, same thing. Because, yeah, well, in the denominator, yeah. Oh, oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, it wouldn't have necessarily been the exact same limit, but the, the idea would have worked the same. Because when you did the algebra to find your A and B, those might have been slightly different. But the idea would be similar, okay? So what does this have to do with pirates? Huh? What are the, some characteristics of pirates? Well, okay, let me let me say I'm a pirate. Okay, if you were to dress me up as a pirate right now, what things, what costumes, what accessories might you give me? You would give me an eye patch. Okay, definitely an eye patch. What else? Huh? I need a hat. I, I've got a monkey or a parrot on my shoulder. Got to have some sort of critter. Okay. Bad teeth. Definitely bad teeth. A sword. A sword. Okay. I've got a sword. A COVID mask. Right. We're a 20, what 21st century, 2020 pirate. Right. Okay. All right. I probably have a wooden leg. Right. You got to have a peg leg. Right. What else? <laughs> scurvy yeah I probably also have scurvy except if I'm the pirate captain then I'm going to get myself plenty of rum and booty uh, when I you know go being, being pirating and stuff right but um, 
how would I discover whether or not there was a ship full of booty ripe for the taking? I'd have a telescope. It's a telescope. Okay, how do pirate or like old timey telescopes, what did they do? They exactly, and that's exactly what's happened here, right? Right. What what we've got is like one of those those pull out telescopes, and all of it collapsed down except the front and the back of the telescope. So this thing is called a telescoping series, because it's like an old timey pirate telescope. Gabriel's horn. Oh, you're exactly my point. Yeah. <laughs> Cole, I'm so glad to have you in class. Jack, is he like this in tutorial? <laughs> Because you've got him still running the show, right? Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. So, this thing is called a telescoping series because it's like an old-timey pirate telescope. Oh, is this like... Like, it, it's a schooner. No, it's a sailboat. A schooner is a sailboat, you idiot. Is that what you guys are going for? Uh, Mall rats? Oh, Nietzsche. Oh. Okay, well, yeah. I was in graduate school in 2010. Yeah, yeah, basically. Um, I translated a half of a commentary of uh, out of ancient Greek from a sixth, late 5th, early 6th century CE uh, mathematician commenting on Apollonius's conics. So, so like there's like an 80 page dissert, I mean, uh, appendix in my dissertation that's just Greek text. Yeah, of course I do. It's electronic, right? So, yeah, burned everything. I spent three years working on that damn thing, and I burned all of them now. Um, now, since then, I've translated the rest of the work, and um, so uh, it's the first and only translation of the whole thing into English. And, um, yeah. And I got beat out by some French people in terms of the first published full translation of the entire thing into a modern language. I beat them partially with my dissertation, but they, they finished first, so. But they translated into French, so. And no one, yes, exactly. Um, yeah, all right, so this thing's called a telescoping series, like I said, because of um, pirates are. Okay, um, all right. So the last thing to observe here um, is that, um, so let me go over to a new page and let me let me take Well, let me say it this way. Okay, so if the series converges, so if you know in advance it converges, then the limit of the a sub n terms must be zero. No, that's true. That's true. No, no, no. That was the limit of s n, not a n. There's just the, the, the terms themselves, right, without the pluses in between. Right. Okay, and no, that's actually a good point to, to remind ourselves of, is that, right, when you're dealing with a series, there are really two sequences, right? One of them is the AN sequence, what each individual term is. Then there's the SN sequence, which is what happens when you start adding up the first N of them, right? So your partial sums is one sequence, your original a sub n sequence is another, and they're related but not identical, okay? All right, so what I'm stating here is about a n, not s n, okay? All right.
well, let me say it this way. So let's just say I give you a sequence, a sub n, and it so happens that the limit as n goes to infinity of a sub n is zero. What can you conclude, um, let me say, um, conclude about Okay, hang on, let me finish writing. Then we conclude what? Let me get a adverb in there. Yes. Okay. Cole says converges. Oh, you're definitely wrong. Okay, I'm walking you right into that trap. Okay. Akbar. That's no moon. Jack. You can conclude jack shit. Absolutely nothing. Right? Okay. Now, why? Yeah. Why can you not conclude anything here? Okay, so. Cole kind of hit the nail, actually, when you said, well, you just told me that A implies B, and you gave me B. Can I conclude A? No. no. Okay, so, if I win the lottery, I will give you each a $1,000. Okay, so if I win the lottery, then I will give you each a $1,000. That's pretty cool, right? Right? I mean, maybe you'd rather have a million, but, and let's, let's be fair, like, if I won the big, big time lottery, I'd just, like, pay everybody's tuition account for the year and just be done, and be like, done, free, gone. Right? Huh? Frustrated. Yeah. Um, well, okay. First, I'd pay the taxes on it, right? Unlike some people. Um, I would pay off all of my debt, buy a Tesla, never fly uh, anything other than first class again, uh, then I would pay all your tuition accounts. It would, and therefore it would be tax deductible, so I might be able to recoup a lot of that money. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. So, all right. So, if I win the lottery, then I will give you each $1,000. Now, let's suppose that on Monday, I come in and hand each of you a stack of 10 Benjamins. What can you conclude? Can you? If I won the lottery. What happens if I'm just rich and a nice guy and hand, walk in and hand you 10 Benjamins? You can't conclude that I won the lottery. Maybe I did. Maybe I didn't. Maybe I'm just rich and a nice dude. Right? Okay, so let's let's make another example. If it's raining outside, then I will uh, take an umbrella with me. Well, what happens if you see me with an umbrella? You don't know. Maybe it's raining. Maybe I know that it's going to be raining later in the day. Maybe I always carry an umbrella, regardless of what the weather forecast is going to be, right? So what, what we've discussed here is if you have a logical statement of the form if A, then B, going the opposite direction is called the converse, if B, then A. They are not equivalent, Uh, the nothing can get concluded if the limit's equal to zero. Yeah, if the limit is equal to zero, then who knows? Okay, and I'll give you a good example. Well, two examples. Both of those, the limit of a sub n is equal to zero, yes? But one of them converges and the other one diverges. Which one converges? 
1 over n squared 1 or the 1 over n 1 series? Yes. The second one converges. The first one diverges. We just proved that. Well, once I did it correctly. Okay. Um, so just because the limit is 0, that doesn't mean anything. If the series you know in advance converges, then the limit is zero, but the logic does not work the other direction. Okay, however, oops. What about if I told you the limit is not zero? Then what can you conclude about the series? It diverges. Okay, so let's talk some logic. Does anybody happen to know what not B implies not A is called in terms of, in logic? Nope. No. A null hypothesis. That's a probability thing. It's called the contrapositive. A logical statement and its contrapositive are logically equivalent. Okay? So, this would be the case of, let's take our lottery example. If I win the lottery, then I will give you each $1,000. What can you conclude if I have not handed you all $1,000? I haven't won the lottery. Right? So let's assume that my promise is true and I'm not going to break that. Okay? Um, now, here's the thing, though. Right? I'm never going to break it because I never play the lottery, because I'm a mathematician and I know better, damn it. Right? <laughs> I, don't, I don't gamble for a very good reason. No. I would be the world's worst sports better because I don't know LeBron James from Troy Aikman. Well, actually I do, but... <laughs> Yeah. Now, what I think is hilarious is I say I don't gamble and I've got a stack of playing cards right here. Yeah. The, no, in computer science, we've been talking about searching and sorting algorithms, so we've been using playing cards as a manipulative. Yeah. Um, this is what we call in the teaching world where I give you an object to, to, like, do something with. It's called a manipulative. Right? And there's, yeah, anyway. Okay, so... The nth term test is what this thing is called, or the test for divergence. You have to be careful how you apply it, right, to make sure that you're not making a logical fallacy. And this is one reason you don't do math after midnight, because after midnight you will screw up the converse and the contrapositive. Don't screw them up. Okay? So I'm going to wave my meter stick here in a threatening manner, and those of you who are safely away in other countries, um, <laughs> Farden was like, I left for water for a minute, and now I have no idea what's going on. <laughs> He's like, what the hell are we talking about? Um, yeah, okay, now we're talking about logic, uh, Farden. So go back and, and watch the, uh, the recording, and then, uh, you know, if you still got questions, then of course uh, bug me. So, all right, so... This concludes, I think, our discussion of section 8.2, uh, and you guys should be ready for the assignment, uh, that assignment, uh, which is up. So uh, we spent two days on this section, uh, so the stuff we did Wednesday and the stuff we did today is all section 8.2. On Monday, we'll uh, continue with 8.3, and uh, 
explore more about series. And hopefully I'll come in and hand you guys all a stack of a thousand bucks, but uh, I wouldn't hold your breath. So, all right. See you guys later. Uh, have a good weekend.